hello people around the world good evening good morning i am dr sanjay kumar today we have very great personality the pal from the usa he did phd from usa in the subject of philosophy oh, okay let's move to the pal to more about uh, to know more about him over to you pal tell our viewers who are you what are you uh, and about your life life story over int introduce yourself to our the viewers over to you pal uh, well <clears throat> Uh, yes, I was born in Washington, D.C., and uh, into an academic family. My father was a historian, and uh, uh, I eventually, I went into philosophy myself. And we moved around a bit when I was a child. Um, uh, we did, we went to Europe a couple of times, and uh, <clears throat> I went to college. I took a long time graduating, I took about 10 years to graduate uh, as an undergraduate, and then I went on to, to higher degrees. And uh, <clears throat> I have taught at uh, Brown University and the University of Cincinnati, and I've also taught high school. And uh, I, I guess that's my, my sort of career picture. I, uh, <clears throat> I I uh, have the hobby of playing the electric guitar, and uh, uh, I I am married. I have two kids who are both grown up now and living in the United States. And uh, uh, I guess that's that's about it. I don't have a terribly complicated life. Okay, uh, great to know about your life story, your introduction. Uh, and uh, my next question to you is that, uh, as you you did PhD in philosophy, my question is related to this. How how you uh, uh, how did you selected PhD as a your career, and how did you selected PhD as your subject of PhD? Over to you, Paul. You mean why did I decide to go into philosophy? rather than some other field. Yeah, okay, well, that's, I think I first went into philosophy as an undergraduate. Well, partly I was just fascinated by the questions of philosophy. Also, I found that, that a philosophy major gave me more flexibility. I could study lots of things. For example, if, you like, if you're a philosopher and you like math, you can do the philosophy of mathematics. If you like science, you can do the philosophy of science. You can study aesthetics if you're interested in literature or drama or music. So uh, getting a, uh, an undergraduate degree in philosophy really allowed me to incorporate lots of different things that wouldn't have been true. In, in some majors, you're practically the whole four years of undergraduate is taken up with that particular subject that you've chosen. But in philosophy, you had lots of extra time. I had lots of extra time to take other subjects. So I studied lots of other subjects as well as philosophy. And then, but I, I guess the reason I went on for a higher degree is just that I thought, well, this is something I'm good at. I seem to be good at it, and I like it. So um, why not build a career on something that I like? And so, <clears throat> so I did that, and uh, um, it worked out fairly well for me, I think. And uh, I enjoy teaching. Uh, and uh, so it it uh, it worked out fairly well. I, I, another thing I like about philosophy is it's very similar to mathematics. You don't have to travel about, and you can just think. You know, a mathematician or a philosopher, they just need to sit somewhere quiet 
and think about things. <laughs> you know, I mean, go all over the world looking for bones or something. So that appealed to me. I'm an introverted person. I I like to have a place and stay there. And uh, this philosophy uh, allows me to do that. I like to think. And uh, I try to get some exercise in order to stay healthy. But basically, I, I like to think, to read, <laughs> that sort of thing. So philosophy is very well suited to that. Great, sir. Great, sir. Very impressive Very uh, to know that uh, you uh, shared with us that why you selected philosophy. As you said that you selected philosophy because you love to think. Mm -hmm. And great to know that, sir. My next question is that uh, to disc, uh, tell us the, our viewers uh, so you can they can understand in simple language, in simple word, that what is philosophy? What is what philosophy? In very simple words, so viewers can understand in easy way. <laughs> over, over to you, sir. Well, that's... that's uh, uh, philosophy has changed as you go through history, but t today... I think philosophy is, uh, it deals with things like ethics, uh, what, what is moral and what is not moral, and value, what it means to say something is good rather than bad. A, a lot of philosophy is involved in conceptual analysis. That is, you have an idea, you have a concept, but you want to, exp you understand it, but you want to be able to explain it. Uh, so it's called conceptual analysis so everybody has the notion of goodness but what does it actually mean to say that something is good um, and uh, so a philosopher wants to develop the idea of goodness further or beauty I mean we all have an idea that some things are beautiful we want art to be beautiful we say a sunset is beautiful uh but what, what does that mean when we're saying that, that something is beautiful? And um, so a lot of philosophy uh, involves questions of that sort. There's also political philosophy. And let's say someone might just study the world as it is and politics as it is, but the philosopher wants to know uh, what uh, what the ideal society is like? Uh, what sh what should society be like? So a sociologist might just want to say this is what society is actually like, but the philosopher wants to know, well, how could we maybe improve it a little bit? What what should it actually be? So that that's um, that's what political. Uh, philosophy is. And then there's a lot of just, well, like I say, conceptual analysis. There's the philosophy of science where we analyze the basic uh, uh, concepts of science or try to understand how science works. Uh, so I, I think there, there's logic, which is, see, the psychologist might say, this is how people actually reason. But the logician wants to know, what is good reasoning? Okay. <laughs> now, really, psychologists know that we do terrible reasoning all the time. And that's what interests them, in a way, more than when we reason well. It's much more interesting to them when we do crazy things. Uh, but uh, a philosopher studying logic wants to know, what is good reasoning? Can we find more powerful ways uh, to reason than... than we are at a certain point. Uh, so a lot of philosophy has to do with trying to find the good things, um, uh, the right things, the justice, um, and, and, and things like that. We make a value judgment about things. We don't just describe how they are. We try to say what would be better or worse, but we <laughs> was particularly interested in making things better, I hope. Great, sir, great. 
okay sir uh, you describe very well uh, that philosophy uh, give us chance to think what are the more good things what are more positive things what are more ethical things what are morals what are non morals the mm-hmm. philosophy uh, uh, give us uh, to think more and more about the positive things positive mm-hmm. side of the life positive aspects great sir uh, very impressive to you describe it very well and we understand it's very well hope our viewers also understand it uh, my next question to you is sir that does philosophy has and changed from the uh, century before uh, to the modern century matlab uh, from the previous to this modern era does there is any change in philosophy if change how it matlab uh, travels uh, how it look like over to mm-hmm. you sir well in the european tradition uh which is mostly what i i know about i try to learn more about other traditions but most of my education has been in the european tradition and in in the european tradition you might say that philosophy has gotten smaller because what happened is all the sciences branched off from philosophy so in the ancient greek at times anyone who was thinking about things in a theoretical way could count as a philosopher but now biology and all these sciences have been given their own academic departments and so uh so philosophy is now much more restricted um <clears throat> and uh, in in that sense it's it's gotten smaller it it uh um thinks about fewer questions than it did in ancient times it's it's more it's more specialized but it's also true that the boundaries are a little bit fuzzy and vague so sometimes let's say in 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 psychology and philosophy there's a kind of intermediate state where both psychologists and philosophers are talking to each other about whatever it is they're talking about something to do with the mind no doubt uh so the boundaries of philosophy are not absolutely rigid um uh, and and many people if you do the philosophy of science you have to know a lot of science Uh, some people have two degrees they would have a degree in philosophy and a degree in one of the sciences uh <clears throat> but uh but uh, on, on the whole philosophy is uh, at least in the in the english speaking world philosophy is very much con- what i said before it's conceptual analysis in modern european philosophy they do much more with politics and social criticism so it's it's kind of different it's it's almost like two branches uh, of philosophy and uh, of course in other countries also uh f- philosophy uh is influenced by the particular culture there uh so you know japanese philosophy will be probably be influenced by buddhism and shinto and 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 japanese traditions which is as it should be i i think that's good it makes philosophy richer that way um so that's uh let me i'll be right back there's an alarm uh friends we have paul from usa today we are discussing about philosophy what is philosophy does philosophy change from the back area to the modern era uh, what, uh, does science overshadow the philosophy if yes then how paul is describing us <laughs> about all this okay so that alarm went off it's okay please continue actually okay please continue 
It can well, you a, came to um, an end. I think that's the main way that modern philosophy is is different. Maybe there's another thing that I think modern philosophy, recent philosophy, is a little more modest. Um, People like to work with small problems instead of creating great systems. Uh, in the past, many philosophers have tried to create these great systems that explain everything. But uh, we're now realizing this is very difficult. Maybe people were smarter in those days, I don't know. But uh, many people just try to solve, all right, here's a particular problem. I'll take this little problem and, and try to really solve it. I won't try to produce a huge system that's supposed to be able to explain everything. So it, it's changed in that way, I think, for better or worse. <laughs> great, great, sir. Uh, you describe it very well and in a very uh, simple way, so we can understand it very uh, in a better way. So my next question is to you. In the recent era, in the modern era, does the science, the technology has overshadowed the philosophy? Please uh, explain it. In the recent era, yeah, in the modern era, does the science overshadow the philosophy? If yes, then how? Please explain it. Sir. Over to you. So are you asking about the interaction of philosophy and science? Or? Okay, yeah. I am asking that the science have overshadowed the philosophy. Yes, I, I think I think science has been a big influence on philosophy, and it should be because modern science is very successful, and and this is part of what I said before that part of what used to be philosophy is now is now science uh, or something else, um, but nevertheless, if if the scientists seem very sure of something, the philosophers tend to say we shouldn't argue with them in in their own field. So, for example, Einstein says that space and time are combined together and that space and, and, and space time can be warped and twisted. Okay. So in the past philosophers have not said this. They were influenced more by Newton who said Space is space, time is time, and it's rigid. It's just a big container that contains everything that happens. Uh, but philosophers, it took a generation, but philosophers adjusted to Einstein. And so now they're asking, well, what does it mean to say space is space time can be curved? And they accept what Einstein has said. And I, I think this is a good thing because the scientists know what they're doing. <laughs> and we should not fight with them. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. You uh, you said very well uh, that uh, science uh, influenced by the philosophy. Uh, uh, you gave the example of the Newton and the Einstein uh, very well. Uh, uh, well, well explained example. Sir, my question is to you, uh, it's about philosophy because I am curious to know more about philosophy because I only remember the name of Arstu Aflatun uh, in the philosophy. So I want to know more and more about modern philosophers, how modern phila philosophers are far more better than past one. First, uh -huh. and okay, sir, over to you. Um, how modern philosophers are far more better than the previous one. And uh, the second question uh, is that, what is the difference between wisdom and philosophy? Ah, so what was your first question again? Uh, how modern philosophers are far better than previous one? Ah, yes. Um, well, sometimes I don't think we make steady progress. Sometimes I think people are too quick to say, oh, the philosophers of the past, they're, they're not as good as we are. But it actually, sometimes we decide that the people from the past were not as stupid as we thought. <laughs> so it's not, 
it's not a a steady rise. But I do think that we make some progress. Uh, it's hard to explain that progress without getting technical. But um, I think, well, the influence of science is part of that. We make progress because we listen to the scientists and they're very smart. <laughs> uh, and so science has been a big influence. And, um, you know, if you look at Aristotle, he did science, really, he invented biology. But he was also very wrong about lots of things. And he was wrong about physics. And, and uh, so we now, um, we now value Aristotle more for what he says about friendship than what he says about physics and astronomy and biology. He was much wrong about all that stuff. <laughs> Uh, but for his time, he was great. Like he had Alexander the Great send him specimens from other countries. When Alexander went out conquering all those other countries, he sent specimens of plants back to Aristotle. So Aristotle was really doing science, but, you know, we have the advantage of two and a half thousand years. <laughs> right? <laughs> we may not be smarter than Aristotle, but we do have more information. And, uh, and and we're very lucky to to uh, have that. Um, so I think we do make we we do make some progress. We debate with each other and and uh, we study the old philosophers. We don't ignore them, but we can criticize them. And so I think we do make progress, but sometimes it's up, up and down. <laughs> so we hope that we're doing the right thing. Maybe in another 50 years, people will say, oh, those early 20th, first century philosophers, they, they get it all wrong, you know? So we just do our best, and we hope that we'll create something of value <laughs> for at least for a while. Now, as... I'm sorry, go ahead. Shall I proceed to your second question? Okay, sir. My second question is that uh, what is the difference between wisdom and philosophy? Wisdom? And philosophy. Yeah, okay. Well, I think, uh, of course, philosophers try to be wise, I guess. That, that was the original meaning of philosophy was... In Greek, Sophia means wisdom or something like that. Um, I think sometimes philosophy becomes nowadays not so much a search for wisdom as for, you know, a very technical thing of studying certain problems. I, I think this is kind of unfortunate, but that's the way it is. It's it's it becomes it becomes especially in academia it becomes a job and uh and it, it uh, we consider a philosopher's personal life to be irrelevant you see so if if we discover that some philosopher who teaches ethics has done a terrible thing we say well it's what he says in his writings on ethics that's important. It's not his his personal life that's important. So, um, and uh, and maybe maybe that's right. Maybe that's the way it should be. But wisdom, it seems to me, is a very personal thing. It's something that you acquire slowly, and you don't have to be a philosopher to acquire. And uh, uh, it's a very it's a very valuable thing. I don't know if you can become wise just by studying philosophy, though. See, if you study philosophy, you get all taken up with these particular technical problems. Well, this person said this, but I will criticize it because of that. Da, 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 da. And I don't know if you're becoming a, you're becoming a more knowledgeable person when you do this, but I don't know if you're becoming a wiser person. And anyone can become, I think, a wiser person if they just take the time to reflect about themselves and their lives and to learn from what happens to them. 
Um, <clears throat> if, if you just stop to think about your life from time to time and say, especially suffering is bad, but sometimes suffering can teach you something. You know, you do something and it has bad consequences and you think, oh, <laughs> That was not such a good idea. So in this way, you become you become wise, uh, and it has much more to do with your personal relationships and things like that than with your technical knowledge. Um, and uh, so I, I think that uh, studying philosophy might help a person to become wise, but. I think it would not be enough. You you have to relate it all somehow to your personal life and your your everyday existence. As long as it's just a technical subject that you can study, it doesn't it won't make you wise. Uh, so test these things if you study philosophy and then test it out in your own life and see if it gets you somewhere. <laughs> Then, then you, you have you have a chance to become wise. I think. Great, great, sir. Uh, you said very well that uh, wise person can study philosophy. Uh, that's a great point. Uh, not all philosophers, philosoph one philosopher who is studying ethics does not mean that his personal life is as wise as he's teaching that. So, sir, it was a great way to understand. Uh, sir, my next question is very simple. Uh, from all the past philosophers, which one is your favorite? Why he is your favorite one? <laughs> Why is your ideal? Hmm. I don't think I have a favorite philosopher. You see, I mean, suppose I ask, suppose I ask, who is your favorite biologist? Well, in biology, it's not the person who's important. It's the knowledge. And, and um, uh, so there, there might be a, a biologist whose life you think is particularly interesting, you thought was particularly brilliant, but that's not really what biology is all about. And I'd say the same about, about philosophy. If you, if, you, if you, instead of choosing a philosophy, instead of choosing a philosophy by saying, oh, this guy has it all. So I'm just going to pay attention to him. That's not the way to do it because everybody makes mistakes. So you should think about the subject and not try to find someone to worship, uh, not try to find someone to admire. Uh, so I don't really have uh, a favorite philosopher. Of course, the philosophers of the distant past you can say they were very bright, they were very intelligent, but of course we have learned a lot since then. Um, and so a lot of what they say is <laughs> not, we may admire how smart Aristotle was, but we also have to say, well, he made lots of mistakes. He was wrong about a lot of things. So I think it's best to try to not to make philosophers into celebrities. Where you, you know, people like to find celebrities and then they say, oh, this is such a great person. Um, but I think in philosophy, that would be a mistake. And philosophy is about ideas, and, uh, not about particular people to uh, admire. I once, once, someone once asked me who my favorite philosopher was, and I said, that would be me because this is the philosopher that I agree with about everything, right? So but I, I'm not a great philosopher, but that's, that's the one I agree with the most is, is myself. Um, so but perhaps that's an answer, but that's a bit of a joke of an answer, I think. You know? uh, so, so yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't really have a favorite philosopher, and I, I don't in, encourage other people to to try to find a favorite philosopher. 
great sir uh, you explain all the things in a very beautiful way in practical pr- particular way uh, in a very easy and simple language way so we we can understand our viewers can understand it easily sir uh, not taking too much time uh, uh, firstly i am very much thankful i feel honored that you came to our show and share your opinions and uh, ex- uh, explain the what is philosophy uh, what is philosophy a uh, how uh, philosophy and science uh, uh, influence uh, each other and lots more things we you discuss us and share us in a very great way in a very simple way in particular way sir uh, before taking your leave i i uh, ask la- one last question that give any message to our viewers you have learned from your life experience or to you sir what have i learned from my life experience um hmm. i think one thing i have learned that's been very important to me is i think my 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 parents who 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 are both uh, who have both died now uh they uh they had the view that the way to be a smart person is to be able to criticize everything and <clears throat> at some point it occurred to me that it's much easier to destroy things than it is to create them but that really it's creating things that is the important thing yes you should be able to criticize things but if if you go too far with criticizing things then this is this is not a good thing so i i have tried to cultivate uh seeing the good in everything and uh finding things to admire and to be grateful for so every day i find i try to find something to be that i am grateful for um and i try to avoid uh, trying to refute everything of course sometimes you have to be critical if something's wrong you have to if you think something's wrong you have to say so uh if it's important um if it's not important it's better just to let it go <laughs> and uh off off and uh but i try to to be constructive and i think this has made a very important difference in in my own life and uh i'm i'm glad that i took this path yes thank you sir uh, you gave a wonderful message which you have learned from your life experiences that always find good in something always be be a grateful sir thank you so much Uh, for uh, your uh, precious time for your valuable time to us and we have learned a lot of things from you bundle of thank you a uh, bundle of thanks sir to you viewers we are uh, uh, today we had mr paul he he did uh, he taught us uh, he taught us lot of new things about the philosophy uh, uh, see you bye bye take care okay right. bye It was an honor to be invited. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you, sir. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. And I feel very pleasure. It's my pleasure, and I feel much, much in love from you. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Bye, bye. Sure. Bye, 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 bye.